I was born to be a fighter, had these dreams and desires I would be something better, energy got a fire in my soul to keep burning, a pain that keep hurting, a curse is emerging. Hey guys, Jeremy Mitchell with Sales Pride Podcast. This is our first ever podcast, and I wanted to hit this thing right out of the park. Bring on the man, Andy Elliott. Appreciate you having me out here. This podcast, guys, is, you know, I named it Sales Pride for two reasons. Number one is... You know, sales is kind of like a four letter word for people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I want you to have pride because ultimately what being in sales is all about is helping people solve their problems. Okay. That's a, that's a admirable quality. You should be proud to be in sales. Number two is I want to create a community of fellow lions. Literally my logo is a lion as well, just like Andy's here. It's crazy, and it's a, you know, what do they call a group of lions? Yeah, pride. It's a pride, right? And it goes back to a story and maybe I'll tell the story later with my uncle. But first of all, Andy, thank you for having me out here. Yeah, Thanks I appreciate for being you. On here. So. Yeah. Hey guys, if you listen to what he just said, right? He said, look, if you do a good job, if you're good at sales, if you got a good product, you're actually doing your client a disservice mm -hmm. if you don't sell them. Absolutely. Okay. Cause number one, they're going to continue to struggle. Number two, they're going to stay the same. And number three, they could end up with one of your competitors that don't mm -hmm. care. Exactly. Right. So hey, 100%. if you're good at what you do and you believe in your product, like you're doing them a disservice, uh, not selling it. And by the way, I love what you said. You said, we help people help themselves. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. You said you, we right. help people help themselves. Like our goal is as a sales rep is your goal is to take the client's goals. Your goal is to take the client's goals and keep them at the center of the decision. They're going to make a decision. And as long as their goals are at the center of it, everybody will say, yes, there's yeah. no, there's no, uh, stress. There's no pressure. There's no nothing. And I think a lot of people hate salespeople because they're not good at their job. If I went yeah. to buy something and the person that was supposed to help make it easy on me, made it harder on right. me, well, I'd probably hate them too. Right. And stuff's expensive. It's going to cost more. Inflation right. is real. Right. And that's why salespeople have to do a better job than ever, making sure that people understand and explain the value of products. Right. And just differentiating themselves from not just my own selfish interests, but I'm actually here to serve you yeah. to, to and listen to you and pay attention to what your problems are. And it's it's perfect that you said that because like, it's a perfect segue because... First of all, I'm really big into personal development. Mm -hmm. I've been, I, I just joined the Tony Robbins Platinum Partnership Program. You know, if for the, the people, yeah, and yeah, for people that don't know what that means, basically I paid $80,000 just to be in the room with Tony Robbins and go to all of his events, plus another forty or 50000 in travel to be front and center in all of his events. Yeah, but and, would it cost you not to know what that man knows or to understand the way he operates is millions. Right. Okay. Like, I just want to tell you, always remember this is not what it costs. It's what it costs you not to, to not do it. Yeah. And that, that leads right into my first question is, is I've paid sales trainers, 20, $30,000. And, you know, I had a lot of people at my company, my former company laugh at me and say, why are you paying that so much money for that type of development? So as you were going up in the car sales game, mm -hmm. who were your mentors and who did you invest in to help increase your skill level to get to where you got to anybody and everybody that i felt like delivered a message to me that mm. struck me in the heart or that moved me okay i spent money with right and it wasn't always in sales a lot of the time you know like tony robbins spent a lot of money with right. him. you know when i was 18 years old i you know i spent some money with grant cardone cassette tapes yep. listening to him on the yep. golf cart waiting for a cu customer 100%. to pull in you know any anybody i mean the zig ziglers yep. you know anybody at all you know jim Rohn was just mm -hmm. like you know and that was you know tony's mentor yep. but like but like Anybody that could just speak life into me, I'm going to tell you something about um, coaches, and I'm going to tell you what they can do, and it's, it's the most magical thing ever. They can move people, okay, to take action because they're moved. Right. Listen, I'm so grateful that I started self-developing. I'm so grateful that I'm not the old me. I hated my old life. Right. I ha Look, I love the fact that you can literally be around new people. You can read new books. You, you can be around the the right environment and you can change right and most people in five years will stay the exact same 100 percent. okay so right. i'll see you today and right. then in five years i'll see you and you're the exact same or you've roller coasted down right and then you'll see somebody else and they're thriving they're on fire they're making more money than ever they seem fulfilled they're impacting the world and you're like dude how'd you do that you know exactly how we did it Okay. Number one, what it costs you not to know or to not become the person you need to be is everything. And by the way, your family's counting on you. Okay. No one was, no one was in my family that was taking us to another level. 
Right. Everybody was just okay with average, and mm-hmm. average is everywhere. And look, I'm not hating and saying I don't like average people. It, but it makes me sick if my potential is more. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now. 918-210-0254. 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. And I think that what you're after right now mm-hmm. is after changing millions of people's lives in total like transformation of like, dude, like this is who you are. This is who you need to become. And this is the results that you're getting, dude. And your family's counting on you. Like everybody needs to understand this. Like when I invest in myself, I invest yes for me so I can become who I need to be so I can do what I need to do. But dude, I invest because my family's counting on me to take us to another level. And dude, I don't take my bloodline lightly. Right. hundred percent. You know, it's, it's funny because five years ago when I went to my first Tony Robbins event, I was 365 pounds. Yeah. I'm a big boy. I'm, I'm six, four. Right. And, uh, you know, I was making 80 to a hundred grand a year. I was able to quadruple my income and, and make and the decisions that change. That, yes. hundred percent. Right? Because when you just said, you know, who's the man that I need to be, what do I need to do? Where do I need to grow in order to reach these goals? There's a gap there that you need. You can't just like wish that it's going to happen. You've got to figure out what do I need to do to put myself into a position to make myself the man to attract that into my life. Mm -hmm. At the time it was, I was single, right? Not being able to attract the type of woman. I knew that I needed to make a certain amount of money. I knew that I needed to put forward a better presentation, Mm -hmm. you know, first impressions are so powerful. Mm -hmm. I figured if I just looked at least halfway decent, my sales would go up. I'm pretty sure that played a little bit of a role. What you're seeking seeks you. What you're seeking seeks you. Yeah, dude, like whatever you're chasing, you're turning it on. It's winning. Tim Grover says says winning doesn't recognize you. Right. Okay. Like some people, they want a different life, but winning doesn't recognize them. Okay, they're not doing the work. They're not seeking that. They're not chasing that. They're not, you know, becoming obsessed with it. And if you don't, it's like, dude, you just turn off winning and Uh, winning won't recognize you. I like what Tim Grover said too recently. I'm reading his book Relentless right now. Yeah, you told me. That's why I said that. Yeah, and he says, decide, commit, act, succeed, repeat. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you what, there's a a little bit of a story here that uh, when – You had a, uh, we had an appointment to do this podcast Mm -hmm. about a week ago Uh and something came up and a little personal thing. I won't go into it, but you, you know, we had to push this back a week Yeah. and, uh, it reminded, you know, there was a time where basically I was, uh, not quite sure if I was committed to this Mm -hmm. path Mm -hmm. and I, I reached out to Brandon and, uh, I was like thinking about, Hey man, you know, raise, you know, just seeing if I could get the money back you know, mm-hmm. to be able to do sure. something. And then it reminded me, I didn't, he didn't even have to close me because it reminded me of a time when I almost did this at my first date with destiny with Tony Robbins. I could have asked for the $5,000 back, yep. but then I decided to stick it out and I, and I wrote myself a letter and I thanked myself for following through on that because the times where I've quit in the past, you're just reinforcing that muscle of you know not not following through Mm -hmm. when you decide and act and i realized okay the ten thousand dollars or whatever might last me a month or two of expenses or whatever plus this platinum partnership bill is sucked up in a month but the difference it won't matter in six months when you're making 10 15 grand a day you know because of the things because of the connections because of the conversation and the insights learned from somebody like you i'm going to give everybody an opportunity to really know what you're actually we're going through right there so there's a book called a linchpin okay yeah you're going to get it when we're done okay and you're going to just chew this book up and you're just going to slap someone in the face because you're going to realize it talks about in a chapter the amygdala okay okay And, and the amygdala is something that sits on your spine it's real it's real Mm -hmm. in your body and what it does is that it's made to protect you Mm -hmm. it's it's made where any time that you do something that feels that it's uh unsafe yeah like potential danger you're going into something it literally will sabotage Mm -hmm. everything you're after let me explain why yeah because it has to go through that with you so if you make the decision yeah. and you decide to go, yes. your amygdala will fight with you till the death. Mm. It, it will fight for you till the death. Mm. It will freaking go to war with you mm. because it's like, all right, son of a bitch. All right, you did this. All right, yep. let's go do this. Yep. 
but it wants to run. Yeah. It wants to run away. And so like any time that I'm feeling like uh, frustrated mm. and I'm trying to make a decision yeah. and I feel, fr- this is why so many people are frustrated their whole life. This is why when you see an offer yeah. um, on the internet or something, it says like, you know, nine, you know, thousand dollars and get this course or $3,000 right. right. and you're like $3,000. And then they say, yeah, and you can become a millionaire and you can yeah. do this. You, you automatically say, Ah man, the reason why is because that amygdala says no, dude. Like we don't want to do this. Like just stay where you're at. Yep. Keep your money. Hey, by the way, listen. I'm gonna explain how to beat any amygdala. Number okay. one, be aware of it. Okay. Understand what's happening. Right. If you want to never be frustrated again, hmm. you need to know every time something comes up. I'm like, dude, not today, bro. We're right. rolling through this. Right. I'm taking your ass straight to hell. Right. You're coming with me. Right. And it's like. All right, dude, you're sick in the head. Let's go do this. That's what you have to do when you do the fire walk. Yeah. Well, that's what I was saying. Yeah. And, and then guess what? When you're done, yeah. you're like, dude, that was nothing. That, that was nothing, yeah, exactly. man. And you're like, let's, let's go do it again. It's like riding a roller coaster. Let's do it again. Yeah, yeah. You know, <laughs> but the first time when the bar latches, you're like, yep. let me off the ride. Yep. My son's crying. Let me off the ride. Yeah. And then when he's done, he's like, let's go back again. Yeah, I'm exactly. like, bro, I just got to get him one time. My daughter, yeah. um, on our last seminar, we flew in on a helicopter, right, with our mm-hmm. kids. And dude, she was tripping. Yeah. She didn't realize this thing was gonna go off the ground. She starts yep. crying. She's freaking out. She's going crazy. Weird dude, she's trying to jump out of the helicopter, <laughs> which is like, not you know, we're in a yeah. helicopter. Baby yeah. can't jump out of it. Yeah. Like yeah. she's going crazy. When we land and we get out, mm-hmm. she was like, "Dad, that was so fun. Can we yeah. go again?" Yeah. I'm like, "Dude, that's the amygdala." So I want to tell you, um, when I decided to start my business, like you, yeah, and and you're talking about the money you spent and all this stuff. Right. Listen to me, so worth it. Yeah. You have no idea, you have no idea who you're going to become. And when you become that person, mm-hmm. everybody here, right. you're, you're obviously already developed. Yeah. But dude, there's 50,000 more levels, right. just like there's 50,000 more levels here. Yeah. One, once, once I sold my house in Oklahoma, we sold our house, it was about a million dollar house in Oklahoma, right. which is a, a nice house in Oklahoma. Yeah. Um, I spent 700 grand of the million that we sold our right. house for right. self-developing me. Mm. The Andy Elliott that you see here, yes. okay, would not be here if my if wife and me hadn't agreed that I needed to be trained, coached, and developed to become who we knew yes. that I could be. Now, let yes. me tell you who I knew that I could become. My wife goes, I know you're going to become this. I'm positive of it. I'm a visionary. We played future truth. Mm. Like future truth, Andy, you're not this now, but I know that you're going to be that. So we're going to get you there. And unfortunately it takes money. Right. And if it was free, you wouldn't even care. Right. Exactly. So, so that, listen, if, if it was easy to be successful, everybody would be successful. Right. And that's why right now the things that you're doing is going to allow you to become who you're going to become because you're vested in you. Mm-hmm. Listen, until you become aware of yourself and you become aware of what you're not good at and you start to understand yourself, most right. people have no awareness. Right. And, you become the most dangerous person in the world. I'm telling you, all the things that everybody told me that couldn't happen in my life, right. didn't happen for people like me, I, I 1,000 X'd it. Yes. Okay? And here's the cool thing. I'm going to talk about the universe for a minute because okay. we're going to talk about law of attraction. Let's do it. The universe wants to give everyone what they'll earn, not what they deserve because the universe does not give mm-hmm. shit to entitled mm-hmm. people. Right. It will not... You don't get anything, okay? You get what you earn. Right. And right now... You're earning new skill sets. Yes. You're earning um, hundreds of thousands of little micro skills. Right. Right? Right. Like people say, well, hey, how do I learn to be a great salesman? I'm like, Mm -hmm. okay, well, I can tell you to like, okay, whoever cares most about the client, you know, like that stuff, that's cool. There's hundreds of little micro skills. Yes. From the way that you look, the way that you talk, the way that you believe, the way that you speak, the way that you articulate your words. Like, dude, there are hundreds of micro skills in which you must train over and over and over again to become this person yes. that the world wants yes yeah so i love what you're doing man you're gonna I, kill it dude. i appreciate and, it and you're gonna change millions of people's lives i, I know it. i appreciate that you know uh, that leads off to another point because you talked about the basically the nuances mm-hmm. of of tonality and how you deliver your message you know this is uh, something that i learned from one of my mentors here and he has a completely different approach than you mm-hmm. so i'd love to hear your approach on this because Frankly, when I first talked with Brendan, uh-huh. his energy was too high for, for sure. me, right? Yeah. And and when I first encountered you, like while your energy is infectious at times, it also 
feels like it, it conflicts with what I was taught with this other coach sure. that he says, hey, kind of have like a neutral tone. Uh-huh. And then you can ramp up the certainty in the assumptive language at the end, but you don't want to trigger. You won't always want to be disarming and not trigger sales resistance, what he calls it. So talk to me because like it also seems like when I've watched your content recently, you've kind of like toned down your energy a little bit. And I'm not sure if that's just circumstantial or, or situational, but talk to me about like, uh, bringing, you know, how much energy, how do you gauge how much energy you give to a prospect? And, and is it better to be too much energy than too low energy? Or just kind of talk to me about your philosophy with that. Well, it's simple. Number one, your, your clients, your job is to set, set the state for okay. your client. Okay? okay. If you walk into the mall and you're ready to spend some money, right. if you walk into a store and like there's no music on right. and it's quiet okay. and like it's just boring, okay. like you're probably not going to spend any money and walk out. But then you right. walk into the next door, music on, it's like, <laughs> right, <laughs> right. <laughs> you're like, okay, okay, wait a minute, hold on. Let's okay. start throwing shit in the basket. Okay. Let's start throwing shit. It's right. like all of a sudden you're like, you love the groove. State, transfer of emotion. Take yep. the way I feel mm-hmm. and push it into you. Mm-hmm. So this is different with everybody. So there's not one rule fits all, but this is the rule. Okay. I and I just did this with you a minute ago before we started this podcast, I put myself in your shoes. Yeah, okay. Okay, and I want you to understand this. Empathy is the greatest selling tool in the world. 100%. I totally have the way I think, the way I feel. I am me. But dude, I don't know how you feel. Right. So what I did is I started talking to you, and then I started remembering the frustration that I went through when I started. I started remembering that my wife said, hey, we're running out of money. Like something's got to change quick. Right. And I started remembering how hard it was to start my business. Right. And so as I'm going through this stuff, I literally put myself in your shoes and I was like, we need to talk after this because like I'm understanding how someone feels. So right when I say hi to someone, right. I just want them to know that I'm a great person. I love my job. I love what I do. Right. Um, look, whether you buy something or not, I'm good either way. Right. I just want to make sure that I serve you today. I want to make sure that you're important. I want to make sure that you're significant. I want to know yeah. that. I want you to know that, look, man, like I just want to make sure if our product can solve your problem, right. if it can, right. then let's do something. Right. And if not, like, I love you. I got your back for life. No big deal. But, right. but our, our environment, I want to talk about our environment, okay? okay. Right. Our environment at the Elliott Group is so energetic. It's so loving. You know, a lot of people, when you met them, yeah. when you came in today, yeah. they probably gave you a hug. Yeah, a little fist bump. A yeah. fist bump, yeah. a high did. five. Your wife yeah. gave me a hug. Yeah, like right. that's how we operate, right? right? So, right. you know, like we trust first. I mean, we're, we're all about like we're family. Like, like when I used to greet people in any industry I was in, mm-hmm. it was kind of like welcome to my home, right? Right. It wasn't like, oh... Thanks for coming to X, Y, and Z business. It right. was like, no, welcome to our home. Listen, you guys are home here. Whatever right. you need, we got you. Right. What can I get you to drink? Something hot or cold. It's like, All dude, right. immediately we're disarming them with love. Mm-hmm. Um, so my energy naturally is a little higher state. Okay. Um, but if I notice that my energy is like, like bothering you, mm. then I'm going to pull it down you really do. quick. Dial yeah, like, like we got to have some, yeah, we got to have some common sense, right? right? Like yeah. if people, and, and listen, Let's say that you're irritated with my energy. Mm-hmm. You're either number one going through something, mm-hmm. okay? You don't mm-hmm. ever know what someone's going through. Right. And and then I'm like, man, I got to turn this guy's mood around. Right. Right. So right. like, then I got to bring a little humor in. Yeah. Yeah. I got to make you feel important. My goal is to get a little closer to you. Um, you know, and really at that point, I'll get you to talk about yourself. Yeah. Because yeah. that would make you feel more comfortable with, with right. me. But but our our goal isn't to go and out energy everybody. But I will tell you, I think that whatever you know, you put out there is going to come back. Right. So I, I tend to throw a little more energy out there and then I tend to see people gravitate more towards it. But if I see it's irritating, yeah. then I'll just so pull you, it back. So you do calibrate. Yeah, so that's calibrate. interesting because when I was watching you, I uh, I said, you know, I, I probably tend to be on the more on the boring side of things. Yeah. You know, if, if it was a scale of one to 10, I'm probably a four, you know. But you uh, won't be that way for long. Right, exactly. Look, well, it's w- the conditioning. Wa- watch your podcast today. Right. Watch your hundredth episode. Okay. And you're going to be sh- throwing shit at the camera. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Just remember oh, I said that. Yeah. All right. Okay. Fair enough. So I like just it. making a bet. Yeah. So, but what was interesting is I figured, hey, if I think I'm being Andy Elliott energy level, I'm probably like a six or yeah. seven, well, that's you know, okay. which is probably fine. You're, you know, you're okay. So I'm going to say something. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Andy. A lot of you leave comments telling me that you need help. Do me a favor. I'm going to tell you the best way to get a hold of me. Shoot me a text message right now, 918-210-0254, 918-210-0254. I'll help you with whatever you need. I got your back for life. Let's get back to the video. The better you get at something, the more confidence you have. Right. 
the more confidence you have and you know that you're what you have is so great that right. everybody needs it yeah you, it's really hard to contain right okay yeah. and 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 honestly a lot of people have never believed in anything that much mm-hmm. before so they don't understand and that's yeah. totally okay yeah. and and that's why i say like for me I've never lost a sale by coming on with too much energy mm-hmm. as long as long as my intentions are amazing. Yes, yes. I'm not being a showman or a right. hype guy. Right. Um, and I wear my heart on my You're sleeve. You're being authentic. Yeah, my heart's everything. like yep. right here. Yep, 100%. Like you can just tell. I'm like, man, guys, listen. Hey, let's say, again, it's remodel, right? Because right? like, you did remodeling. Yep, yep. Listen, if you want to know why I'm so excited, it's because, look, your guys are going to get 20 different estimates from 20 different people. And your wife has an idea in her head what this kitchen needs to look like. Right. And I'm just laughing and it's kind of comical to me because if someone comes in here, no matter how much they pay, whether it's less, whether it's more, it's whatever, and they don't put what your wife has in her head mm-hmm. in this kitchen and she walks out and you spent the money, mm-hmm. she's going to be pissed. Yes, exactly. Okay. So who do you do business with? You do business with someone that can see what's in your wife's head, which I, talking to your wife right now, I understand exactly what she wants. Right. I see, ma'am, I see it. Right. Look in your kitchen. Right. Can you see it? Right. So can I. Yep. So no matter what they put down on a blueprint, yep. no matter what price they put down, it is priceless to get what's in your head there in that kitchen. Would right. you agree? Yep. yep. Okay. And how would you feel? How would you feel? And I would bring it I, down. I like it. I like it. Yep. Keep how going. would you feel if they didn't put the kitchen you had mm-hmm. in your head 100%. and you spent the money, whether it was yep. a little too much or it yep. wasn't enough? Yep. You would be furious. Yeah, exactly. And that's why right now, ironclad handshake. Okay. Yep. Come on. Ironclad handshake. Put it there. We're going to do a contract. But my grandpa taught me that you look someone in the eyes, and when they say they're going to do something, they're going to do it. Right. I'm going to take what's in your head. I'm going to put it in that kitchen, and that's what I'm going to deliver. Yeah. Do we have a deal? Yeah. See, but you notice I was really excited about what I do, Mm -hmm. and then I brought it down, which pulled them in. Yeah. And then yes, I made the deal. I do like that. Yeah. So like, okay. like, like people just need to understand how to use the energy in different places. Mm-hmm. Um, there's times that you need to create the roller coaster yep. ride. Yep. Exactly. And then there's times that you need to give information. Yep. And then there's times that you need to slow down and close 100%. and bring people in. Right. Yep. Um, and that's, and that's how Kobe Bryant mastered basketball. Mm. And that really is how you're teaching people right. how, how to, to communicate, how to right. sell and be master communicators. That, that's what we talked about earlier. Again, it's not, as you know, you can give somebody the golden script, but yeah. it's not what they say; it's how they say it. Yeah, it and, depends and, on who you are. Yeah, yeah, and those are those nuances that we're talking about. So, can, man, can I say something? Whenever absolutely. you lost your weight, yeah, right, yeah, how much did that help believe in yourself when you were selling? Yeah, it it was one of those things where I mean that was something that I struggled with my entire life, and uh, and but did your confidence go up a lot? Yeah, a hundred percent because it was one of those things where it was finally something I struggled with for decades. That when I got that win, it was like when I could knew when I knew I could conquer that. That was my most challenging area of life. I could dangerous. I could conquer almost anything. Yeah, so I want anybody watching this. Like I just think it's important that when you when you when you train people, when you build them, like just remind them, like, dude, I know that, you know, I'm not, I mean, I'm not a certified health coach, but I will tell you when you exercise, not only do like clients believe that you're going to do what you say you're going to do because you take care of you. Because it's evident. Yeah. Not only are you in a better mood for the next 12 hours and like you're more pleasant around people, but also there's this cloud when I wake up in the morning sometimes that like is on my mind that like I'm trying to find my best, sharpest self that when I exercise right. or I'm eating clean, like that yep. cloud is gone. Right. And I'm so sharp. People are like, man, how are you so sharp? And I'm like, man, the exercise like knocks it off me. Yeah. Like it keeps me so sharp like an ax. So I just want to say like sharing your, your, your fitness journey and your weight yeah. loss journey, yeah. I think is super important on the personal development side. Like if you do this, like that, and then, and you take the training right. and you don't even have to train that. I told people for years, I'm like, it's like telling people to get close to God. Right. It's like, if I have peace in my life because of God, I'm right. not selling God. I'm just like, Hey, right. if it was me and I wanted to do this, I would go exercise. I would go stay close mm-hmm. to God mm-hmm. and I would train on this program. Yeah. And you'd be at peace, and you'd love who you are, right. and then this stuff would work. And that's kind of what I thought would be make me different as a as a sales trainer yeah. is because of my personal development background that I have with Tony Robbins and yeah. being in that world. Yeah. It's not just about helping companies make more money or salespeople making more money. While that can be life changing, and because yeah. it has a ripple effect into other areas of your life, it's about the the holistic approach. 
mm-hmm. you know, and that's why I feel like what would make me different, you know, and in that, you know, yeah, in will. that sales coaching, yeah, you know, it will. yeah. You, Bottom line is you just want to create higher standards yes, in, in, 100%. In, in lots of different areas, yep. not just in making money. Yeah. Because if you make a lot of money and you're in low standards in yep. all these other areas, yep. so it's nice to see that. Because mm-hmm. And by the way, that's how you're going to make it, too. Right. So that's great. And I love Good. that you, you well, carry that. And it's like Tony Robbins' uh, wheel of life exercise. You know, if you've got one area that's really good, like you're making great money, but you got cancer – you know, you're, you're, you'll give anything to have your health back. It's going to make kind of a bumpy wheel, right? Mm-hmm. If your wheel, instead of being a more well-rounded life. That's right. So that's a hundred percent. I appreciate that. Yeah. All right. So man, I got a little off track on it, but no, we're good. that hey, was good. Bottom line I'm, is we're kicking ass. I, I appreciate I love it. it. This is an opportunity for people to understand who you are, kind of what we're doing. Right. And, um, Tell us what's on your mind. Well, so I want to kind of understand, you know, Tony Robbins talks about, um, uh, suffering and, and kind of the cycle of suffering. And he basically says at first you're satiated, you know, so like at leaf filter, I was making, you know, 20, 30, 40 best month was 50 grand a month in commissions. Mm-hmm. And, uh, so that was satisfied. Right. And then there becomes a point where you're no longer satisfied. You're dissatisfied. Oh man, I'm driving, you know, two hours to these people's houses and oh, I don't have control of my schedule. I'm working six days a week, whatever yeah. you're dissatisfied about. And then there's an event that happens where you reach threshold and you say, that's enough. Never again. I'm not doing this anymore. And there's an opening. There's a gap that you, if you don't jump through and take that, take advantage of that and make a change in your life, then you're just doomed to repeat that yes. whole process all over that's again. Miserable life. So for you, when you were in car sales, you got into management, when, what was that like threshold moment for you to be able to make the leap into the uh, starting the Elliott group? Well, I didn't want to do it. Okay. I'm going to be honest with you. Okay. Um, and, and everybody does things for different reasons. Okay. okay. Um, I own my own company now. Yeah. We built a nine figure business three years. I made Amazing. more money than I've ever made in my life. And it was all by accident. Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Thank God somebody betrayed me. Hmm. Thank God somebody burned me. And my whole life as a kid, um, I suffered a lot as a kid. Mm-hmm. Uh, didn't have a lot of love as a kid. My dad was a good guy, loved me, but just not a lot of love. I um, was very broke. Um, so I wanted to, I wanted to find what I didn't have as a kid as an adult. So when I got into sales, I found income, I found money, mm-hmm. and I learned that mm-hmm. that changed my circumstance and right. my life and my lifestyle, and I loved it. Yeah. But I always tend to become attached to the leaders. Okay. Okay. Because I was looking for love. Okay. I was looking for praise. I was looking for, you know, people to be proud of me. And dude, I would kill to, to, to build these people's businesses. And in sales, one of the big things that I've hated my whole life is that when you decide that you're going to pay somebody something and they become heavily invested from like spending time away from their family to honestly, like a lot of these guys, they're not even at work I mean they're not at home anymore they're really when they're at work they're trying to break these records and they go home all they're thinking about is tomorrow what they're going to do in business and it's like it steals all your joy because you want to build this stuff for these other people and 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 you think you're getting somewhere and then one day they say hey we're cutting your pay plan Mm -hmm. that was the threshold moment for me yeah so I want to tell you I started my company because I built a badass team. Mm-hmm. I spent five years building a badass business. Okay. I created a culture that could never exist, ever. No one in this world could build what I built. Okay. I gave my life to it. I was so proud of it. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't about the money. I was making good money. Right. But I took this company to a level that it was never doing before and, and only to find that one day they said, hey, people that are in your position, yeah don't make as much money as you're making. Now, I want to explain to everybody, I was not on a salary. Mm -hmm. I was getting paid commission. Mm -hmm. And in sales, there's this thing called money made, money paid. Salaries are things that people with small dreams have. Mm -hmm. I had a big dream. So I'm paid off a commission. And commission means if you make a hundred million, then you pay the percentage of a hundred million. If you make $1,000, you get paid the percentage of $1,000. So as you build a business and the revenue numbers go up, 
clearly the hard work you put in to build the revenue in the business, yep. the percentage stays the same, yep. but the money increases because yep. you earned it. Yep. I didn't ask for it. Yep. And I was thinking that this whole time that I'm working this way, that they're just so proud of me, mm -hmm. right? That they just couldn't believe what right. I built. Because you're doing them. In, in hindsight, I would have been so grateful for that. Hmm. In hindsight, it was this. We just don't pay people that much money who do what you do. Now, the second that happened, hmm. immediately, it reminded me of all the times I've been betrayed in my life. Hmm. And I'm like, dude, I'm done. Yeah. I'm 39 years old. I'm sick of getting betrayed. Yeah. And I never want to get betrayed again. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. So the only way that I could not get betrayed again Okay. Your own thing. was to build my own business mm -hmm. and decide in my business, number one, I'm never going to lie to anyone. Ask Brendan yeah. what I told him. I said, yeah. number one, if I ever lie to you, quit. Yeah. If I ever cheat, you quit. Yeah. If I ever take my word back, quit. Yeah. If I ever am not the leader that I said I was going to be, mm. quit. If mm. I do any of mm. these breaking this code shit, yeah. you quit and leave me. Yeah. So my accountability as a leader is to be the greatest um, example to all of my team and to make sure that they always know that I have their best interest. Yep. And by the way, I want to make sure they have my best interest too. This is a two way street, 100%. but we protect each other. We created a family. I wanted to make sure that nobody could ever get burned inside these walls again. Hmm. And so that's why when people come in, even if they're high performers and they're like, Hey man, you know, I'm a badass. I right. could sell anything. Right. I'm like, dude, you're not us. Right. Listen, you are a badass. And those companies over there, yep. they need you. Yeah. But us, yeah. like we're a family yeah. and like we're, we're all going to be high achievers. Okay. Right. But like we run differently. We don't lie. We don't cheat. We don't steal. We have great customer right. service. We have great core values. Yep. We do all these things. So like if you, I always say, if you can't find it, build it. Right. Um, so that's what I did. So anyways, I ran into it on accident. Hey, right. when you get sick and tired of being sick and tired, right. they say when the pain overrides the fear of change, yep. people change. Yep. My pain went so high. I said, dude, I am not scared to start my own business. Yeah. No matter what anybody said, everybody said it wasn't going to work. People yep. have told you you're stupid. Yep. They're going to laugh. Yep. Yep. They're still going to laugh. Yep. And you're going to have to prove that what you're doing is going to work. And yep. they will still yep. laugh exactly. until one day they realize that you made it yep. and they have evidence of it. Mm -hmm. There's evidence, yep. like evidence, you made it. And yep. They're going to be like, I knew he was going to yeah, make it. Exactly. I was always rooting for him. Uh -huh. in the, Dude, listen, man. Right. Okay. You didn't believe in me at all. And, it, and a matter of fact, it fueled me. Yeah. I'm like, I just tell everybody that doesn't believe in me. I'm like, dude, thank you guys. Yeah. I'm like, honestly, dude, if I wouldn't have had, there's some times that I wanted to quit. Yeah. Okay. And if I wouldn't have had all that hate, mm -hmm. um, and I wouldn't have been pissed off and I didn't keep that chip on my shoulder. Yeah. I just reach into that little hate bag. Yeah. I'm like, I'm like, what did they say? Mm -hmm. What did they look like? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I remember that shit. Okay. Yeah. Let's go back to work. 100%. And then, and then you build man, you yeah. know? So you got to be sick in the head and that hate is the best thing for you. All the people that laugh at you, all the people are telling you you're stupid right now. Yeah. Dude, yeah. soak it up and yeah. put that shit right here. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then whenever you feel like you're getting tired, be like, what? Right. Oh, okay. Let's go back. So, so go back on the ego part because you were talking about these people, you know, like I'm a badass or whatever. And I noticed on your core values that that was one of them, no ego. Mm -hmm. And so I can tell you from my perspective, I was kind of like you where I was craving that that attaboy, you know, because mm -hmm. I was, you know, abused as a child. And yeah. it's not about a sob story, but it's like, yeah, it was you, like, you wanted some love. Dude. Right. And yeah. so I, and so I found that love in the, Hey, you know, Jeremy's the top guy this month. And you know, what are you doing differently or whatever? And, um, and, and so it kind of developed a little bit of an ego there because finally I did what I felt like I was capable of doing this whole time. And it was like, for once in my life, I had some fucking confidence. Mm -hmm. And so how, you know, and I, I think you mentioned, you know, Kobe Bryant and Michael Jordan, these guys have an ego, but it's because they can back it up because they have the results. It's, it's not just, a uh, I, I think the difference between confidence and cockiness is mm -hmm. you can actually back it up. Mm -hmm. So talk to me about your core value you on no egos because you kind of have to have an ego to be in sales and be a high performer I think but at the same time there's a difference with the teamwork aspect of it as well so talk well, to me also about in that. the Bible it says pride comes before the fall, fall. okay yeah. so pride ego and entitlement is normally where people lose themselves okay. and become ungrounded to what the original mission is okay okay 
there was a time and I'm totally like why I love like being an influencer is because I like to tell stories to people so that they don't have to go through the same shit. Right. There was a time where I wanted to be this leader. Okay. Right. Um, I wanted to be, I wanted my last name to matter. I wanted to, no, really I wanted to build a movement. I wanted mm -hmm. to be a part of something special and, um, and it happened. Right. After two hard years of grind, right. we started to develop it. Mm -hmm. And one day my wife goes, I don't like the way you're talking to people. Mm. She goes, I don't like who you've become. Okay. And I'm like, what do you mean? What's your problem? Yeah. And immediately I'm striking her quickly. Okay. And she's like, you forgot why we started this. Mm. Okay. You're no one. Mm. Okay. Those thousands or hundred thousands of people, those people, those people believe in you because yeah. of who you were and where your heart was. Yes. She goes, Andy, be very careful with your ego. Hmm. Because listen, man, you, you can self sabotage I say I see people self sabotage themselves all the time. Yeah. This has never been about you. Mm -hmm. People can see your heart, mm -hmm. they can see your eyes, they can see what you right. care about. They love your skill. They love your story. They believe that you're an overcomer. They know that you believe in them. Yeah. Dude, when you start changing that shit. Mm -hmm. and 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 they notice you're out andy and so so that's why like i just want to say i think that ego kills my growth mindset mm -hmm. and the ego almost rests me back into complacency like i made it mm. and i want to tell you this there is no making it in this yeah. game there is no mountain and by the way listen there is a guy out there that's so good at what he does that he's gonna make me look like an amateur okay right. i'm just training like a right. motherfucker so when right. i meet him i can dust his ass Okay, so I just want you to know that like, hey, my wife says everything can be taken away tomorrow. Right. It's the truth. Right. So I just want to make sure that um, I'm not like thinking less of myself, but also I'm just like leaning into my skills and my competency and my confidence. And like, I'm just trying not to be, um, you know, cocky as in I'm better than you. Because really at the end of the day, I am, I am a coach, right? Right. Um, so I, and I am a team player. I have a team, okay? Yep, yep. Uh, David Goggins doesn't have a team. Right. David Goggins is like, you know, stay hard, you know, yeah. stay away from anybody. <laughs> like, stay crazy. Like, he didn't have a team, okay? Yeah. So he can be the most cockiest asshole in the game with the strongest mindset, but he's not bringing anyone else with him. Mm. Mm. Okay? Yeah. So like... His I, vision is different. Yeah. So yeah. like me, I, I have a team. I have a big team. Right. And I teach people that an individual can be beat, but a team can't be beat. So mm. like... Dude, like your team has to feel where you're at, but also you got to raise a standard. Yep. Be a record yep. breaker, uh, record breaker. You got to be a standard setter. setter. Yeah. yeah, and you have to be that person that's just smashing it. Mm -hmm. But also, so so an alpha elite salesperson would be a, a person that continues to break records every month and raise the bar, while also cheering for their team. Mm -hmm. yep. um, that guy, everybody loves. Right. And I just didn't want to be the record breaker. And not cheering for my team anymore. And yeah. and so anyway, so my wife, she's really good about checking the dog shit out of me. Mm. Saying, dude, you're not that cool. Mm. Okay? Mm. Like, don't forget, man. You yeah. know, you, you prayed for this life. You got yeah. it now, and you're going to act like an asshole? Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. damn. I think what it kind of boils down to is the big takeaway I've gotten from the last couple of Tony Robbins events I've gone to is it's about, it's not about you. It's about serving others. Facts. So have you read uh, any of it, like Alison Armstrong books about, okay. okay, so there's a great book called Keys to the Kingdom, mm -hmm. where it basically talks about a man's growth from a boy, and, and she equates it back to like the medieval times, right? Mm -hmm. So like uh, a, a stable boy or whatever, taking care of the knight's horse, horses, looking up to that knight that's in his 20s or whatever, and he's out there, you know, slaying dragons and conquering the world and stuff like that. Well that night in order to grow to the next level which is to be a prince he has to realize that there's something out there that's greater more than himself it's not just about mm -hmm. him so that's when you start to get the family and all that and you're developing your kingdom and then in order to go from a, a prince knowing that it's not just about you um, it's about serving the others that's how you end up graduating up to being a king mm -hmm. tony talks about in relationships how there's seasons, there's ups and downs in all relationships. And in order to go to the next uh, stage in the relationship, it's about service to yeah, others. And right. so what I hear you saying that your wife, when she checks you, mm -hmm. it, it's like, hey, this isn't uh, the Andy Elliott show, right? This Facts. is about you serving the thousands or millions of other people out there and it's making it about them. Wrong. Yeah. 
it's like you ever heard somebody say i met my manager i could tell he was important but then i met my letter my, my leader and then i felt like i was mm. important uh, like yeah. it's like dude our goal is to yeah. obviously lead by being the example right which is common yep, 100%. For a leader to if first. you're not doing it right if you're not influencing yeah. yourself you can't influence anybody else that's right so like yeah. the self-leading part is natural but like dude it's about making more leaders yeah you know what i mean and yeah. like sometimes i'm like damn it babe like i'm like yep. why did i forget that or how did i get skewed and normally it's just because we're human beings i'm gonna share something else with you so there's a part in there where it talks about the tunnel to go the transition from a prince to a king is you uh -huh. have to go through this tunnel and the tunnel is just basically about where you have this concept that man i should be here i'm this old i, sh I thought by now i'd be here and a lot of men die in that tunnel and they mm -hmm. never make it out of that tunnel but one of the biggest things that can help pull a man through that tunnel is his wife is his woman yeah the most dangerous thing in the world is the person you're doing life yes, with. Yes, yes. And, and I mean in a good and a bad way. Yeah, Number one, uh, yeah. uh, they can cut your legs yeah. off, they can make you feel like a piece of shit, yeah. and they can kill you. Yeah. Okay, but also they can build you up, yeah. they can empower you, yeah. they can make support you feel strong, you, they can you. support you. Yeah. But me and my wife have a rule. So if anybody wants to know how to do that, just in a 10 second conversation, number mm -hmm. one, if you treat something like it's a beginning, there'll never be an end. 100%. So go back to day one, yep. be good to yep. each other. Yep. And then number number two, be direct with each other. Don't walk on eggshells around each other. Mm. Doesn't mean d don't disrespect each other. Yeah. Yeah. Fight fair, you know, yep. stuff like that. But yep. like, um, but, but talk to each other because I know a lot of people, the reason why they fall out of love or they become complacent or they can't, grow together yeah. is because they have resentment in mm -hmm. their life because at some point something bothered them and yeah. they they didn't feel like they could speak up i used to shut my wife up when she would tell me things that i didn't want to hear yeah and i don't mean shut her up in a bad way but i'm like oh babe you're nagging me right now right and i realized that dude there was a time where she quit telling me yeah yeah and that because was you trained her well that was when i right. got in trouble yeah yeah, I, I got in trouble because she quit protecting me mm -hmm. because I told her that her opinion didn't matter yeah. in in by she, she in different ways. Off. Yeah, dude, yeah. I'm telling you, you don't want that to happen. Nope, 100. Um, so I had to I had to eat shit, yeah. and then I woke up and I realized that hey, dude, if I was to die, she's the only one that's going to be there for me. So yeah. like, why am I being so? Why am I being a dick to her? Yeah. Like, this is stupid. I'm pleasing other people that won't be there, and then the person that wants to be there for me, who's trying to protect me, I'm not listening to. Yep. And then I switched it. I put her first, which was all she wanted to be the whole time. 100%. Yep. And the next thing you know, dude, she's supporting me. We're doing life together. She tells me the truth. I understand. See, as a man, the way that you tell me something is the way that I perceive it, right? So I have to listen to what my wife's saying. If you, if it's like, hey, babe, can you, uh, can you pick up your shoes? Mm -hmm. Yeah, babe, no problem. Right. But it's like... Pick your shoes up. Right. I'm like, dude, I don't like that shit. Yep. Like, like, so I like, so like guys or even women that you need to learn on, on your delivery. And my wife started working on the way she was delivering things yep. to me, but also she was, I'm not always going to be perfect for yep. you. 100%. Sometimes yep. I'm going to say something wrong, but just yep. listen to what I'm saying. Yep. And so I stopped getting emotional on like how she was saying it. Yeah. And it's and not about you and taking it personally. Yeah. Right? And dude, like, listen, now, right. no matter how we say it to each other, which yeah. we always know that we have good hearts, right. it's like, what is that, what is that person saying is mm -hmm. how we process the it. intention behind it. Yeah. And yeah. dude, like, she just wants what's best for me. Or we're trying to, right. you know, be disciplined. We're trying to, you know, if we can't do the little shit, we damn sure can't do the yep. big shit. Yep. So it's like, we're trying to, uh, to grow together. Yeah. And dude, since we did that, my whole company has grown yeah. because she really runs it and she's the leader. Mm. You know, uh, I know this isn't a relationship podcast, but I'll just no, give you but, one but, little but thing. But if you miss that yeah. and then you learn sales yeah. and your home life sucks, yeah. you're not going to sell anything. It's the same shit. thing, right? And that's the, why we talk about the holistic yeah. training. So there's a little tip I'll give you to how you can talk directly mm -hmm. without causing an argument that I learned from Tony. It was called the SEW method, so the so method. S stands for sensation, mm -hmm. E stands for emotion, and then W stands for what I want. Mm -hmm. And so basically it's a way for you to communicate how you're feeling in a way that's not gonna trigger an argument because it's, it's like, hey, babe, man, right now I just feel like I've got this like my pressure on my head. You're getting out of your head and you're like talking about the sensation in your mm -hmm. body. And, and it's like I'm feeling stressed out or whatever. That's the emotion, right? And what I want is just for us to be able to, like, stop arguing and just go on the couch and go cuddle up for a little bit. 
you know and and so it's whenever and i find that i I used it on my boss when i was quitting leaf filter Did you guys cuddle up no no but you know no but uh you know it was like i used that technique to be able to talk about you know what i wanted in a way that you know was direct but you know it wasn't one of those things where you burn a bridge yeah the way he perceived it was like i understand what you're saying yeah yeah and by the way Basically, what you just said is d- delivery, which is sales, because mm-hmm. the whole 100%. thing in life yeah. is being a master communicator, is being yes. a master closer. That's yes. presenting, yep. because it's everybody perceives stuff differently. So it's all up to the deliverer. Yeah, and that's yep. it. Like you just showed us how to sell your wife to have a good conversation with you. And you can you can do that with clients. Yeah, you know, like if you're like, have you ever gotten? You know, you're you're trying to help a client out. I had a, a coaching client the other day that was telling me about how he got all in his head. He was frustrated because his client wasn't playing ball. He said, mm-hmm. you know, he was trying to ask, you know, their needs and wants and find their problems, but they weren't really like participating with the game. Mm-hmm. And uh, and I, I told him, look, man, you could have used that SEW method where you could have said, you know, folks, like, man, my my head, my my face is like getting hot because I'm like, I'm getting frustrated because what I want is to be able to show you the value here of how if you could just, if you had conditioned water, you wouldn't have to spend all this money on soaps and, and the free soaps we would give you would basically pay for the whole water system, let alone the fact of the thousands of dollars you would save on not having calcification on your washer washer and dryer or your dishwasher or your hot water tank or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I just want you guys to be able to see the value because I'm trying to help you. Mm-hmm. You know, and and she's you know, the same deal. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so S-E-W. you can do it. You, SEW, sensation, emotion, and what I want. That's really good, dude. All right, I, I appreciate. That. I appreciate that. Lots of tricks coming out of the bag. There we go. It's and that's it's all about you know a well-rounded life. Yeah. You know, it's it's not just because one of the things Tony says, and you were starting to allude on this, was the ultimate failure in life is being successful and not feeling fulfilled. Yeah. And that was ultimately why I decided to leave Leaf Filter because even though I left a multiple six figure a year job, I just I didn't feel like I was like saving the world one gutter screen at a time. Yeah, you know, purpose, impact, fulfillment. Yes. Yeah, those things mean a lot, man. Yeah. And a lot of people, when they're younger, okay, yeah. they're chasing money. Yeah. which yeah. clearly you being teaching people how to sell, so they're going to make a lot of money. But yeah. as you get older, you know, you're just like, man, dude, like, I want heaven on earth. I want to make good money, mm-hmm. and I want to be happy. Yeah right yeah so it 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 just changes right we mature right yeah absolutely yeah well i I appreciate that so how did you end up you know i'm just getting started here Mm -hmm. i've got two individual clients that are paying me a thousand bucks a month Mm -hmm. all right and it's just individual reps that work for companies Mm -hmm. i've got one family owned uh modular home dealership been family owned for 75 years Mm -hmm. and then i've got like Tony Robbins uh, coaching company, Robbins Madonna's, uh, the COO reached out to me to train their internal team. Mm-hmm. And so I'm, I'm f- they, she's in Scottsdale, actually. Yeah. Uh, so I'm hoping to have lunch tomorrow with her and get that sewn up. Yeah. Uh, and then I've got a, a couple of uh, like big builders that are doing like roofing and stuff like that locally uh-huh. that that may end up being a six figure thing. But how did you end up getting like your first like 10 to 20 big clients? Well, so there's two ways you can do it. One is you can go like door to door. Okay. Right. You can yep. go to businesses, businesses. and just, yep. you know, ask, you know, hey, are you selling at the bottom, the middle, or the top? You okay. know, like, do you feel like you're producing your max deal? Um, you know, what I do is that, and I could use an example, um, I take home remodeling guides, and obviously there's people in the field, there's people in the phones. Yeah. And um, there's quotes to be given, and yeah. I'm sure that you guys don't close at 100% closing. Okay? Right. So our goal is to take opportunities and then increase, okay. right? So, um, you know, I don't know where you're closing at right now. This is you because right. you were in that space. Yeah. When I sold, um, you know, I was number seven in the country yeah. for what I did with this yeah. company. Yeah. And now I consult companies and I help, right, close at a higher closing ratio mm-hmm. and show people how to do it right, make the customers happy, make more money, mm-hmm. which is the whole goal. Right. I closed around 70%. The average in the industry is around 30%. I don't right. know where you're at, but if your team could close at 70, I'm sure that would increase profit margins ma- massively. Yes. Yeah. So me being here, I want to talk to you about a program that I have that would get your ta- get all of your guys to 70%. Yeah. And I can show you exactly how I did it. Yeah. And then I want to teach them how to do it. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. And, and so that, that would be like a door-to-door, right? Yeah. Like going to businesses. 
but it is 2024 now almost. Yeah. Okay. So 2024 would be, um, social media. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Which I know how to do it cause I did it. Yeah. And everybody says, dude, how did you blow your social media up? Um, so our, so, okay, let me give you an example. So like, there's like Andrew Tate, mm -hmm. Andrew Tate stormed the internet Yeah, like overnight. He was everywhere. Yeah. We pulled an Andrew Tate, Tate st type deal through the algorithm okay. <clears throat> that blew up our social media okay. on, on five platforms yeah. everywhere. Yeah. And overnight we hit the same deal. And now I teach other coaches also how to blow that up. Okay. So I would tell you, if you're like, Hey man, if somebody's out there and they're like, I, I want a lot of business, I'm just going to say, well, common sense is everybody's on their phone. Yeah. Okay. They're on their phone when they're driving. They're yep. not even watching the road. Right. Um, they're on their phone when they're at dinner with their wife. Yep. They're not even at dinner. Yep. They're on their phone while they're working. They're not even working. They're on their phone. They're on their phone all night long. I mean, they're just on their phone, man. Yeah. Yeah. So if they're on their phone, yeah. Um, that's where you need Figure to Figure out how to get in front of them. Yes. So that's okay. the secret, okay? The okay. secret is to own the internet. That's the secret, okay? okay? Um, but in the beginning, as you're building that, because it takes a minute, mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm just like, to, okay, so I would write like a top 10 hit list every morning. Okay. And and I got thrown out of a lot of companies in the yeah. beginning because there's a lot of closed-minded people. Yep. But then every day I'd, you know, come home, I'd be like, babe. Ah, I got one. Yeah. Got thrown out of nine. Yeah, yeah. But I got, got me one. one. Yep. And and you know, like going to companies okay. um, was very humbling. Yeah. Because they don't know who I was. Yep. So you know, and obviously no one wants to be told they're doing a bad job. Yep. So I had to kind of learn how to make those relationships. Yes. You know, and um, anyways, you know, I got better at it. But I did that in the beginning to yeah. sign up some accounts. Yeah. And then uh, social media just eventually caught up right. pretty quick, and then. Yeah. There was that business that came in massively. That's interesting because the the builder, it's funny because I was telling Brendan about this. I kept seeing this truck drive by me on my way home every day or way, you know, driving to the city. Uh -huh. And I, I saw that they did gutters. And I'm thinking most gutter companies, when I talk to them, they're selling for 5 or $6 a foot. Sure. Our cost, like if we weren't making any money, was $12 a foot. What if I could go to these companies and show them how to how to double their prices and literally double their triple their profit margins? Yep. And that was what ended up getting me in. Uh, the guy I called and I got the name of the ops manager or the sales manager, and I didn't even need to talk to him. I ended up uh, driving home and there's another truck, right? Reticular activating system, mm -hmm. right? Pays attention to what's yeah. important. I pull into the gas station. I didn't even need to pull into gas. You know, you're one of your core values is trusting in God. This is a God thing. I'm a hundred percent convinced. Yeah. And I'm not even like, I don't even have faith. We'll talk about that another time. Yeah. Um, I pulled in and I had 77 miles till empty on my car. So I didn't need to pull over and get gas at that time. I just figured, you know, might as well do it. Now the, the truck builder followed in, followed in behind me. So while I'm pumping gas, the guy goes inside and gets a drink or whatever mm -hmm. at the on cue. And then he comes back out and it was like, every time I feel that for the last three or four months, every time I have this inspiration strike, it's like when, it, when I feel something telling me inside, yeah, go this. talk to him, mm -hmm. go do it, go do it. And, uh, so that's how I ended up on this podcast with you. I, I messaged Brendan yep. long story short. I get to the guy, I talk to him, I tell him basically kind of like what you just said. Yeah. I was like, hey, I was the number seven income earner at Leaf Filter. I see you do gutters. How much do you sell your gutters for? Man, I was selling them for starting off at $18 a foot. Plus, I was charging this and this and this. I was pushing $20, $30 a foot sometimes. Mm. And then I told him about, he was like, well, what are you doing now? Because he's sitting here trying to recruit me to come sell for him. And I'm like, well, I actually do sales training, coaching, and consulting for companies. Oh, yeah. And he was like, well, we're actually looking for that. So it's it's just kind of funny how that, yeah, that, that worked. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that is, I call it a spirit, you know. Right. It's right. like, dude, and you can't, you can't disobey it. Yeah. And if you do, it'll eat your ass up mm -hmm. for the next couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, dude, there was a time. I mean, a lot of the times I'll, I'll buy somebody's groceries or somebody something. And yeah. I'm like, dude, like, like you can just, you, whatever I feel, I do it. But the times that I didn't do it, mm. um, there was this time that I thought about tipping this lady. Um, it was like 500 bucks or something, but me and my wife at this time weren't really making a lot of money. Yeah. Um, and where we were, but we were just paying off all our debt. And it was a time where we weren't like, we weren't buying coffees out. We weren't doing whatever. We'd go out to dinner. And I remember I had 500 bucks and I was like, I'm going to give it to this girl. 
Mm. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And uh, I didn't talk to my wife about it. Mm -hmm. So I thought if I gave it to her, she's going to rip my ass. Yeah. Maybe she wasn't okay. But, and then it's kind of funny. I, uh, I didn't give it to her. And I went out to the car and it just ate me alive. Mm. And I told my wife about it. And she's like, when have I ever stopped you from giving mm. somebody money? And you got to go and, to one. Well, but here's what's funny. I go, I know, I know, man, but I just, I, I didn't know if it was like the devil. She's like, when has mm. the devil ever pressured you to be generous? Right. Right. I'm like, you definitely want the devil, yeah, right? Awesome. Like, you definitely had to be good. She's right. like, come on, man. Don't be a dummy. Wow. Well, so I went back in, and she was gone. Oh. And then, um, anyways, I, I tried to stop by like five yeah, times to try to trying find to her. catch her. Yeah. And uh, mm. anyways, last time I went, she wasn't. Or when I went back again, they said she didn't work there. Oh, And I was man. just always like, oh, dang it. I got to find this yeah, lady. Because yeah. I got to fulfill. I got to yeah. finish this shit. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. Um, so, like, now when I feel it, mm -hmm. like, I'll pull You'll a car listen over. to it. Yeah. Like, I'll do whatever. I just yep. need to get it off. Yeah because I, I need to do it and that's kind of what i'm doing it's like if i see a truck that has the signs on that i'm like all right put a note call that call that company or call them literally yeah. on the truck hey you just passed me on the street man and you know dude, and you'll you... learn listening it may not happen just yeah, then dude exactly dude there was things that i did early in my career um with with my business yeah. now yeah that literally two years later tied in one of our biggest clients right one of our biggest clients that we do a lot of business with that i I would never imagine. I was really kind to a bunch of his people and did mm. a lot of things for a bunch of his people. Yeah. And two years later, he goes, you know, you did some things for some guys that work for me that I thought were very odd and yeah. awkward. Yeah. And I've watched you from a distance and mm. I've seen, mm -hmm. you know, like what you stand for. Yeah. And that's honestly what is making my decision up for me right. about you doing things now. Yeah. Because I got to see, you know, the way that you cared then. That's yeah. why I'm doing it now. And, and I, there was no money changed i just did some things for some people yeah. and helped them i yeah. gave them some free courses yeah um for some newer guys yeah and uh dude like just totally like i i just and and by the way i i needed them to pay for those things back then yeah but yeah. but i could break the rules i could give them to them i could do whatever and i just did it man and it really paid out so you don't ever know man like being good to someone, you know, like when someone else is talking about you, because you are going to make it, you right. are going to build this shit, right. and one day you're going to be there, and they're going to be like, dude, I've met that guy. Right. Yeah, yeah, I was in his early stages of being successful, but, you know, he's a good dude. Yeah. You know, because they always say money just magnifies who you are. 100%. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. Like, so, yeah. you know, right now, if you're after money and you don't want to be good to people until you get money, right. that's like being a salesperson and people proving to you that, that they're going to buy right now before that, you know, you, you give them your best. Right. I appreciate you know? that. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, uh, I know we've been, I've taken up quite a bit of your time well, and good, I, I appreciate it. I if it. We can keep... What are the last few things you want to cover? Yeah, that's, um, I, that's what I'm trying to, uh, see if there's anything else that. Yeah. Che while you're checking it out, yeah. here, I want to tell them something real quick. Good. Listen, if any of you guys right now are, are watching this podcast, which clearly they are, and you've made it this far in the video, you're the top 1%, right? So you need to make sure that you subscribe to his channel. You need to make sure that you follow him. It's super important. Okay. As he's going to uh, recreate and totally keep changing, and he's obviously coaching other people, you know, when, when you follow somebody or you reach out to someone who's doing something big, I always say my mentors in life are people that have gone where I want to go. You guys make sure you reach out and get super close to him. It's very important. I appreciate that. Yeah. You know, that's uh, one last thing that I would, I would probably say if I had to dial this down to, like, one last question um, is – some of the people that have been part of the reason why I came back to following you is I could see the people you were running with. And I'm like, man, if he's running with these people, like he's legit. And kind of part of the reason why I wanted to do the podcast with you. Yeah. I think, uh, you know, uh, Ed Milet is like a miniature Tony Robbins. Yeah, he I is. love that guy. Yeah. And, he, uh, he's a, he's a super sweet guy. Yeah. Super loving. Yeah. And, and, and he's a savage. Yes. So you don't, yeah. It's not, I mean, he, you can't mistake his kindness for weakness. hundred, yeah. He's very loving. Right. Yeah, savage. And, and Andy, when I listen to his uh, Real Life podcast, man, that dude fires me up to where, like, I, I, I'm ready to, like, I got to dial it back a little bit when we're talking about yeah, the yeah, energy thing. Yeah, my wife, thing. she always says the same thing. She's like, I can tell you've been watching yeah, Andy yeah, again. Yeah, Because yeah. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> And she's like, okay, all right. Yeah. You've been watching Andy again, haven't yeah, you? And I'm yeah. like. And I'm in I Ryan's Ryan's Ape, Ryan Stuman's Apex Entourage group, you know. Yeah. So I, and I, he's I, a savage. Yeah, awesome guy. Um, so my my question is, 
you know, my ultimate goal, I feel like, is to be able to speak on stage and be able to yeah. provide value on, on stage. So how did you get connected with those guys to be able to speak on those stages? Because that's ultimately, I would say, coaching is great, but, like, I, I think I could make a bigger impact, you know, speaking uh, multiple people at once. Uh, so talk to me about, you know, give me some advice if I wanted to develop that speaking career and be able to get connected with those types of people. Just stay on your mission, man. Okay. Okay. Just stay on your mission. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's a thing that you're going to tell your clients this, so you have to take your, your, the same advice. Okay. Um, what's it going to cost? More yeah. than you want to pay. Yeah. It's always going to cost more than you want to pay. Yeah. Okay. You're you're just going to have to figure out. Um, it's it's going to cost a lot of money. There there was a time where I wanted to train with uh, Patrick Bet David. Yeah. And it was like 200 grand, mm. and I didn't want to pay that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But I also needed to get close to him, mm -hmm. and I also needed to grow and right. also needed to build a business like he had yeah and i'm like okay so number one can can i afford it i can but it's going to strap me like yeah. no other and i yeah. go well when have i done my best when my back's against the wall yeah. so i'm like okay all right so if i spend the money and he teaches me what he knows and i know that i believe in him and i can go down there and spend some time in proximity with him mm -hmm. Even though I don't want to spend this money, I also don't want to go on and not know what he knows. And I've seen what he's built. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to pay it. And I'm going to put my back against the wall. Yeah. And I'm going to bet on me. And I'm going to bet the farm on me. And dude, I came back and I kicked everybody's ass. Yeah. And every opportunity that I've gotten to spend any amount of money with anybody that I believe in. Um, that's why when you're like, hey man, I, I spent you know 80 grand on Tony Robbins. I'm like, dude... Spend 200 grand with him. Yeah. Who gives a shit? Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, like the abundance mindset um, has got me in the farthest. Mm -hmm. I would go to dinner when I was younger with, with people. And even now, like I'll do it. I just did it last night. Um, I went to dinner with the owner of Apricot Solar, okay. the second largest solar company in the world. Okay. And, um, and uh, you know, I fought him for the t ticket. Well, number one, I, I ended up paying. Yeah. Okay. Because you can't beat me. Yeah. Right. Like it's physically impossible. But I remember, and I can afford it now, but still, I right. still have this standard that I pay. Yeah. It doesn't matter. I don't care. I will pay. And if, and if like, if 20 other people end up joining us and I don't like that because I'm like, fuck, this is going to be a big ass bill now. <laughs> I'm still paying yeah. because that's just the way I roll. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't go to dinner a lot with people. I don't go do stuff. So when I do, mm -hmm. like I'm going to pay. But I, I want you to remember or think about this. When I was younger, I went to dinner with some high level people. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when I first started my company, um, I had a chance to go to dinner with some high level people. I got invited to a table mm. and at the end of it, um, there was a 20 something thousand dollar bill. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I knew the guy that was at the end was going to pay for it. I knew it. But yeah. what I did is that I paid for it. Yeah. And the guy goes, Hey, who bought dinner? Yeah. And he didn't know my name. Mm -hmm. And they said, uh, Andy bought it. Yeah. And he walked down there and he goes, dude, that took some balls, man. Yeah. And I'm going to tell you what happened next. He's like, I want to get you on my podcast. Nice. And that podcast probably made me two or three million dollars. Awesome. 20 grand. Right. And I didn't know what was going to happen, right. but I had, I knew that I needed to show people. By the way, it's not like I gave that and I knew what I was going to get. Right. Dude, there's just this abundance mindset that you have to have and understand that, dude, this is no longer about money. Yeah. This is about having the, the courage to take risks. Yeah. This is about understanding what you're worth. Mm -hmm. This is about understanding that everything we were taught as kids, everything that we were programmed in school, all of that shit is fucking fake. All that shit is bullshit. It's all wrong. It was all made us to go get a nine to five job, yes. have low dreams yep. and small dreams and not win. And not buck back. Dude, we were trained to be freaking slaves, factory workers. Yeah, yeah exactly. We we were like yeah. that. I mean, it's and it's cool. Like, but 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 once you know that the game you're playing, that the rules changed, yep. and that's not the game anymore. Yeah, you're like, dude. Okay, so like, what they taught me to do that I've been doing that doesn't work. Mm -hmm. Like, can someone show me what does work? Right. 
And then I paid to get around That's those exactly people. It. That's how you, you're going back to the mentoring and the modeling. Yeah. And, all and, of that. and, yep. and dude, like those people got it. Yep. They made it. Yep. You don't think they had adversity. You don't think they got laughed at. You yep. don't think everybody made fun right. of them. Right. Dude, you don't think they went through shit. Yeah. You don't think people burned them. Yeah. Dude, all that shit happened. But you know what? They loved it because they knew where they were going and they were going to get there. Mm -hmm. Um, one way or another, and it didn't matter. That was the inspiration that made me start this business. And this kind of, I think it's a perfect way to kind of close this interview up because it kind of goes full circle back to where we started was about mentoring. So I went to Tony Robbins' uh, Unleash the Power Within, mm -hmm. uh, the virtual event a couple months ago when I decided to join Platt. And um, he, he said, you know, anytime you want to... Um, master a skill mm -hmm. it's you've got to do three things and i forgive me if i'm if i'm saying this again for a no, second time no, or I something know. so think, so I think it's important one, we recap yeah number one is finding somebody that has outstanding results model what they've done so like you said you paid to be around those people to do what get the same recipe yeah. you know if you got the best chocolate chip recipe in the world you make it in the same order you're going to get the same results yeah so and you want to meet the baker yeah 100 percent yeah, you, brain, watch you might yeah. be able to figure something else out yeah and then number two is uh total immersion immersing immersing yourself in the environment yeah and number three is constant space repetition mm -hmm. so what i decided to do with my coaching business is it's like, hey, if you're a home remodeling company, whether you sell windows, solar, walk-in bathtubs, you know, leaf filter, you know, gutter screens or whatever, you know, if you want me to come out to your home, just like a client is when the lead comes in, that we send those people, our reps out to a company with no guarantee that there's going to be any business. Right. But we go out there to give them a quote, find out what their needs are and close, you know, 60, 70 percent of the That's time. Right. I, I would go out to a company and be a fly on the wall, listen to your reps, see where they're possibly missing out on sales and what that would translate to in a total bottom line for you. And if, if we're talking, you know, if we're a 14 million dollar organization, you got 14 reps each doing a million. You just doubled your business. Easily. Yep. And that's the thing. It's like even if we only added 5 million and made them from a 15 million to a 20 million, what's yeah. that going to do to their bottom line, that owner's bottom line? Yeah. And so like that's that's how I decided I was going to do my structure because I knew I would never make a million dollars a year at leaf filter but if i just had 10 clients you know at a hundred thousand yeah and help people yes which exactly. is heaven on well, earth and that's the thing is yeah. like it's not about the money anymore it's about the service to the companies because if i can you know uh, help a, a a rep go from making 50 to 100 grand a year to making 200 grand a year that's that and multiply that by 10 14 reps in the office take a uh, an owner who's not just owning a uh, uh owning a business but operating a business yeah. and allowing him to step away from the business a little bit be able to have systems in place from everything i'm learning with business mastery and everything mm -hmm. you know to where he can enjoy the time with his family and and enjoy the business it's life priceless. a lot more all of that exactly it's it's yeah. uh, you know money is just uh, uh just the byproduct of the service that you're giving to mm -hmm. other people so the more service i can how, give. how does someone reach out to you you know, like, can they text you? Yeah, uh, you uh, texting is probably the best way. Yeah, so yeah. So, what's your phone number? Is four zero five two seven four two three two six four zero five two seven four two three two six. You know what I love right now is that if somebody reached out to you, I'm gonna tell you this. When I started building my business, I had a lot of information. I had a lot of things to give. I had more time to give. Yeah. I was so hungry to attack this. The first people that reached out to me in the beginning, mm -hmm. I grew and blew their shit up like no mm -hmm. other because yeah. I was so eager yeah. to get my first yes. like big yes. testimonies. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I needed yeah. them. So anybody right now that's watching this, like shoot them a text message if you really want to grow in sales. Whether you're in, bu in business, whether you're an individual, he clearly coaches individuals. He coaches big businesses. And when somebody has something to prove, everybody always wants a lot of attention, right? So I'm like, dude, when somebody gets really big and they have millions of people, like you're not going to get that attention exactly. anymore. So the goal is, is that the people that got the most out of me, mm -hmm. I mean, really in the mm -hmm. beginning and a lot of my time yeah. and, and were the people in the beginning, yep. you know, yep. and I did some of my biggest developing, um, with people early on because yep. I could have the most hands on. Right. So I feel like the next like probably 10 clients that you take on <laughs> are probably going to get, right. you know, more of you than anyone will yeah. ever get. And I know that you're going to take it personal. Right. 
which is what people pay for yeah. to take their numbers personal yeah. and you're probably going to help them kick that out so I, I, I'm laughing because my first client that literally, when you said I accidentally did this, like that's how I kind of started this business. Yeah. I accidentally sold a couple people. And my first guy, he was uh, for Rebath, uh, he averaged eighty to to $100,000 a month, which is okay. Mm -hmm. And his first month of working with me did $185,000. Yeah. And it's like the the $1,000 he invested in. Well, because you're, you're a high achiever, yeah. and now you're dealing with somebody else who wants to be a high achiever, yeah. and the things that you did that made yeah. you achieve yes. high numbers, yes. you taught him, and yeah. now he can get what you have. Yeah, in one month. Yeah, well, and, and, well, it doesn't it doesn't yeah. take long. Like right. coaching, having a personal coach mm -hmm. is life changing. Yeah. Okay, and yeah. everybody needs a coach. Yes. Everybody, even, everybody, even me. I have coaches. I, everybody has a coach because we all know we have so much more in us, and we want someone else to help positively peer pressure us to become more and to want more. And, and, and that's it. Like we sometimes got to talk shit out with somebody, you yep. know what I mean? And that's um, the thing, reason why people go to these Tony Robbins events and they, it's like, uh, they think, Oh, this is just motivational. You're jumping up and yelling and screaming and dancing. Yes, no, it's and it's like, no, that's not what it is. And the, and the difference between somebody like me that, you know, tripled or quadrupled their income and dropped 130 pounds mm -hmm. was because I didn't just attend the event and then go back home and fall back into my old routine. Yeah, executed. I, I had a coach. And that coach helped me raise my standards up mm -hmm. and double my income on that standard and lower my weight and all that stuff. And so the difference between the people that it's just a rah-rah event and becomes life-changing is because they hire a coach and they keep the momentum going. That's right. That's right. I love it. Guys, well, hey, I want to tell you number one, dude. Awesome. This is the first pod podcast. I can't wait to see you on podcast 100. Yes, sir. And then on the other side, you're going to know that there's someone today that's not paying attention that should be. Mm -hmm. And you're going to make sure that you push that shit through that camera to get a hold of them. Because just like you changed, I changed, mm -hmm. we all changed. You're looking for the next big success story. And that. that's it, man. So, yeah. you know, you just increase your state. You love what you do more. And then, you know, it's just like. It's like, it's like hula hooping your first day of hula hooping, you know, you can't be very good at it, right. but once you do it a hundred times or a hundred days, I mean like, dude, you come in the room. It's like people are like, dude, you've been doing this your whole life. Yeah. And you're like, no dude, it's just, I put the reps in, yes. which is what you said on the yep. last thing that Tony Robbins, you got to yep. practice, you got to put the reps exactly. in, you got to, yep. you know, space repetition. Yeah. Space yep. repetition. So yep. anyways, much love, dude. Thank you. Andy. Kill it, man. I know Appreciate you're going to go super far and uh, we support you every step of the Thank way. Okay. So. Appreciate it. Thank you guys. Let's kill it. Hey guys, I just want to tell you, you're the true one percenters. You made it till the end of the video. Do me a favor, share it with the friend that wants to go to another level. Make sure you like the video, comment below so I know who you are. Set your notifications and then subscribe to the channel. We got daily sales training videos dropping. I'll see you soon.